Hello, it's Ryan Gordon. Here we are for part 11. So, um, I've been feeling a little overwhelmed recently. I have all these Patreon projects I'm trying to finish, and, uh, you know, SDL is about to ship a new version, and we're working on virtual reality stuff for Dragon Ruby Game Toolkit, and it gets to the point where you have so much to do that you just get overwhelmed and you can't start on any of it. But I have to keep telling myself that all you have to do is just keep putting one foot in front of the other and just do one thing, keep it simple, and you can get make progress until you get everything done. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a little progress today. So where we last left this thing was here with this pretty thing that, you know, plays some music and not much else. So let's um, get this volume slider working, because right now it does not. So we're going to talk about, let me see here, um, Atlas, start at BMP. Let's talk about what the Winamp skins look like for volume. Let these all load. As you can see, the skins are just a bunch of bitmap files. Oh, and hey, it came right to the one I wanted. That's great. So the way the volume, uh, the, the volume skin works is you have down here at the bottom are your little knobs that are on top of the thing. That's for when it's pressed, that's when, for it's, when it's not pressed. And as you can see, the rest of this is just bitmap after bitmap, frame after frame of what the thing will look like. Now, this is a little ridiculous. You think, why wouldn't you just have one solid bitmap and then these buttons that slide over top of it? But I'm going to show you exactly why right now. Because you can do this magic thing right here. If you recall our Sony thing, where you at? Volume. Volume. Come on, there you go. There's the Sony one, as you can see. There is no knobs at the bottom, and it's just, uh, let me zoom in here, it's a dial, but as the, the dial moves, they change the top of it, and the bottom of the dial is static. The bottom of the circle is never moved, so you can only move the dial from here to here. But uh, one of the things about his ridiculous as Winamp skins are in this regard, it lets you do some interesting and flexible things like that. So let's uh, get started on this and see how far we can get. Um, do, 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 let's get, not that thing, okay, let me hide that again, because that's just obnoxious, okay, let's see, so, in here, we have our button thing, and we're going to add a new type def here, and we're going to start, we're going to try and be a little data driven here today, struct, we're going to call this guy the win amp skin slider, now, I have not thought far enough ahead to wonder if there's going to be differences in the other slider that's on here, which is the balance control, but we'll try and just make this generic for now. So first things first, you have a knot, well you have a texture of course, which is that bitmap I just showed you. We'll do the same thing as we did for the, the button up here. We're going to treat the knob as a button itself, Winamp skin button, just so otherwise we're going to end up copying and pasting all this stuff. And it is technically a button, although it's going to work a little bit different, we'll call it a knob. Um, then we need to know a few other things about the slider that are slider specific. Let me see here. So we have, where'd you go? Um, let me load my Atlas version of this so I can actually see this stuff clearly. There you are, okay. We need to know how many frames of animation, for lack of a better word, this is. We're gonna need that in um, frames. We'll get to that in a moment. We're gonna need to know Separate from the button, we're going to need to know what the source rectangle, no, the destination rectangle is. Technically, all of this is source rectangle. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, we're going to need to know where it's drawn on the main thing, so we'll call that the destination rectangle. Uh, we're going to need to know a value for it, we'll just, like where the slider is in space, where it's slid to. Uh, number of frames, and we're going to need to know, I guess, int frame width and frame height and I assume that all the sliders have just like you, you can't have a sub portion of this rectangle it goes all the way across and it starts at zero zero for the top one so we're gonna hope we're clever about that okay so frame width frame height and there's maybe there's other things we'll see how this works so let's just start with that ah come back come back come back I lost my thing Let's start with that and let's start building out what we need for that. And you know what, let's do an, enum -like, an enumeration like the button ID one too, because we're gonna have at least two sliders when we're done. We'll call this SLD for slider, we'll call that volume. 
And eventually there'll be a balanced one too, but for now let's just leave it at the one until we get a little further along. Slider ID, there we go. Now we're gonna add that new texture in here to our skin, which is the volume, uh, the volume skin stuff. And of course, we're gonna add our list of sliders. We have some sliders. Slider total, okay. So now we're gonna just be a cheater about this and we're gonna just search for the word buttons. And chances are we're gonna have to do stuff for sliders in all the same places, so there you go. I need to load our volume thing here. Volume a bit up, okay, cool. We're gonna come back to this in a moment. What else do we have? Okay, yeah, let's init this first. Init skin slider, skin sliders. Winamp skin slider volume volume. It always uses this texture volume. And then we're gonna need a whole bunch of numbers. Everyone's favorite part of these videos. So let's figure that out real quick. Okay, most of these are gonna be the same, so I'm gonna start up here and copy and paste. But we're gonna add a bunch more to this too, I suspect. So let's see. Uh, we'll call it skin slider. Obviously, this is going to be a slider now instead of a button. Slider. Texture. Yeah, okay, we still need that. Okay, so now we're going to need a couple of things here. First off, we do still have a button, so most of this is still going to be true. Whoops. But we're going to have to add a few things because there's also the slider itself has some data it needs to. So let's go grab our data from up here, just so we definitely are filling in everything we need. Let's go back to our thing. There you are. Okay. Let's put some magic bookmark uh, bookends on this so we don't compile that by accident. Okay. So let's see. So slider texture equals text. We'll just set that up right from the start. Uh, and then since this knob that we're gonna so that I can go this knob here is just a standard Winamp skin button. We'll just use the standard init skin button function we already did. It's a slider knob, and it uses the same texture, and then, okay, well, we're going to need some other things here, so we're going to need, because the width and the height is going to be for the whole slider, but the width and the height for the button is different, so let's put this stuff down here, width and height. Okay, so we're going to also need constant slider x. Yeah, actually, let's just do this. With height. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Slider X and slider Y. That's the starting points for those. We're going to need those, but not for the button. We'll keep our SXU for source X coordinate unpressed and SXP for blah, blah, blah pressed. We'll keep those for the buttons because we're going to need them for those. Um, and we'll do that. So, okay, so we need texture, width, and height of the buttons. knob width, we'll call that, constant knob height, fan's going like crazy on my laptop today, I don't know why, I'll let it go for now though, okay, um, width, okay, so the button check, texture checks, we need the width and the height of the knob, so that's going to be knob w, knob height, no height, knob height, and that needs the destination point for that. For now, we're just going to leave that at zero, zero. We'll, we'll put that at the, the, these these are the slider destinations, but we'll just do that for now, and we'll be updating this later. Uh, and then we need the source and stuff, so these are just straight pass through S, uh, S, Y, U, S, X, P, X, Y, P. Okay, so that takes care of the vast majority of our information right there. Boop. Now this is an this is an obnoxiously long function with a lot of parameters, but this is also just a convenience function that we're going to call it as one big massive one liner, and it's going to set up this whole widget. And we don't have to mess with it again after that. So, so we're going to consider this forgivable for now. And just no, frames const int frame width. 
Oh Lord, const and frame height and const float initial value. And we may change this some more, but that'll get us started. So slider num frames equals num frames. Frame width equals And the reason we're doing frame width and frame height here, well, you'll see in a moment. Okay, then we need to set up our desk rec to slider. So we know where this is getting written into the window. Desk rec x equals dx y, then width and height of the slider itself, not just the button in the slider and value equals initial value. Okay, good. Whew, that was a mouthful. Okay, let's go. And that should update that, that should fill in that whole structure. So we're gonna have to pull out some magic gobbledygook numbers here and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we have slider and texture, easy peasy. So we need the width of this thing. Bring out the GIMP. Where's my thing on the atlas? Main, there you are. Okay. So this right here is where the volume control goes. So this thing is. Okay, there we go. So just make sure its width and height is 68 by 13, 68 pixels by 13 pixels. That's done. Its destination is 107.57, 107.57. And then, wait, what was slider x in this? Did I use that? Slider x. I never used that. Oh, that might actually not be necessary. OK. Because we have a destination, and then, OK, we don't need to know the x and y, because that, that changes depending on which part of the frame you're showing. So, OK. Um, so we don't need that. We do need to know the knobs width, though, which is back to volume real quick here. There you are. Let's zoom in a little bit on this. OK. Pressed, unpressed. So let's get unpressed right here. I don't know why they did H and O. Maybe they're not meant to be letters. I don't know. Whoops. All right, there we go. Stop that. Not for crying out loud. OK, hang on. I'm struggling with my tools here. OK. Okay, so 15, uh, we need the width and height, which is 14 by 11 for both of these. And then we need the unpressed coordinates, which is this booger right here, which is 15 by 422. And then over here, this guy is 0, zero by 422. 0 by 422. So that's our unpressed and pressed. Now, number of frames. Let's figure out how many of these there are. Hang on a second here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Here's where this gets dicey. Let's put a little mark there so I know. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. All right, so there's 28 frames in this. And I think that's universally true, but we'll just, it's always good to wrap these things in data. So there's that, the frame width of this thing going all the way across. I think these always go vertically, but just in case there's a slider that doesn't, we'll keep that in a variable too. All right, so this is always 68 across, so the frame width is that. Now this is where it gets dicey for you, because in this bitmap, this white and this red part here is not part of the anime, is not part of the image. That's a separate, that's just to separate it. So, um, so let's go to the top of this thing. There we are. So we're at zero, zero. So this is the size of the thing you want to draw, but you've got to bump it down two pixels for the actual frame's height so that you can skip to the correct one correctly. And that is 15 pixels 
wide, even though the actual image you draw is only 13. And then that's the frame height. And then for an initial value, since the volume will leave it all the way up, 100% 1.0. Okay, good. Good, good. Let's get rid of these. All right, so now we have a slider. And slider is, has data. So hopefully everything worked as planned. Let's continue to search for the word buttons and see what else we need to fill in here. Okay. <clears throat> Whenever, uh, when we draw the frame, when we draw the whole, just redraw the window, we go through a loop and we draw all the buttons in that enumeration, in that array. Let's do the same thing and draw all the sliders. Because eventually, right now we're just doing one, but there's going to be two eventually. Draw slider. I'm going to cut, cut, be and paste, draw button because a lot of this is going to be similar, but not enough that we can generalize it more, I think. Draw slider, when you have skin. Slider, slider. Okay. Um, so we continue to be fancy here, and just if the texture is missing, if, we, if the bitmap wasn't there, or we couldn't load it or something, we'll just try and draw a colored rectangle. Um, and for the actual background, let's have it change color based on how intense, how much, how close to 100% you are. So the color would be, let me think here, color equals slider value. Okay, we don't need pressed for now, let's see. Just a good assert in here is always good, just slider value is greater than or equal to 0, 0.0f just so you can't possibly be outside the range of zero and one without us noticing. Just so things don't blow up, because we're gonna have to multiply this like it's a percentage, so. Um, okay, slider value. We want it to be at full intensity. If the slider is all the way at full and at zero intensity, if the slider is not. So you end up with an integer between zero and 255. We'll set the thing to color, 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 arriba, like that, full alpha, 255. Uh, so you'll get some shade of gray between black and white, depending on how much of this, how far the slider is. Slider, and then we draw that rectangle to where the, the slider should be on the screen. To its destination rectangle. Now that's only if the texture is missing. That's a fallback. In theory, you should never see that. Normally, we want to actually draw the texture. And for that, we want to do, okay, first off, slider texture. Uh, we don't care if it's pressed. We need, well, we do actually do care a little bit. So, const sdl rect source rect equals, all right, what do we call this thing now? Okay, we know number of frames. We know where it's supposed to be on the screen. We know its value. Okay, let's go look at this real quick. Okay, <clears throat> so it's source rect. In this case, is always zero. For now, we may have to change this if some other piece of the Winamp skin looks different. But right now, the it always needs starting at the left-hand side of this, no matter which frame you end up with. And then this is where it gets tricky. We need to know frame Y. We'll calculate that in a moment. And then we always need a slider destrect width and slider destrect height, because we don't scale these so the destination rectangle also benefits us for what we need for the source rectangle too because it's a one-to-one -one mapping okay so we need to know num frames equals slider num frames that might be overkill let's see constant we need to know which of these frames we should be drawing depending on how far along the slider is so we know how many of them there are, and we know the position of the thing. So we should go frame index equals slider 
num frames divided by slider. No, no, not that. Times slider value. Okay, so we have this many frames. It's 28, but let's say it's just 10 because that's easier to do the math on in our heads here. So you have 10 frames times something that's between 0 and 1, which means every, you know, you're, you're going to end up with a number when I cast this back to an integer at the end of this. Oh, we don't need num frames. Okay. Uh, you'll end up with 10% in, it'll switch from 0 to 1. 20% in, it'll switch from 1 to 2 all the way to the end, where if that's 1, it'll be that times the number of frames be 10. So that should give you the whole range, and it'll tell you which of these frames you should want based on the value of the slider at that moment in time. Okay, so then constant frame y plus source y, because it's in the source thing. Source y equals slider frame height times frame index, right? Let's see. So if the frame index is 0, then the height times, whatever the height is, times 0 is 0, so it'll start in, it'll go to this corner here. And then if the index is 1, it'll be the height of the frame, boop, right to there. And then two heights and three heights. Okay, so that should work. Index. Okay, so we have that, and then we come in here. I'll we start here. We're keeping track of frame width, but right now it's actually the same thing, so that's why we're just doing that. Okay, yeah, that's fine. We don't we don't actually need frame width. We're just, in case the slider thing is weird later, we'll, we'll hold on to that information. We don't actually need it right now. So there's that, and then we do source rect, and that's not slider. Okay, so in theory that should draw to our renderer with the texture, with the piece of the frame that we picked out, to where it's supposed to be on the window. Okay, that should do it. And then, of course, after you draw that, on top of that, you want to draw the knob. Now, I bet you're thinking, but Ryan, there is no knob on this hi-fi thing. Renderer. And I'm going to show you skin slider knob. And that'll draw that. Okay. Now this one, at the very, very bottom of the thing, you have your knobs down here for whether it's pushed or not, but you'll note that this one does not have them. But that is okay, because it just has the individual frames in the animation. That's okay, because if you give SDL render copy a source rectangle that's outside the range of that picture, it just won't draw anything. Um, it's smart enough to recognize that and say, as an optimization, there's nothing to draw, and it'll just return immediately with no big deal. So that will make this actually work for both cases. If you're using the default skin, or if you're using our Atlas skin, it'll draw these buttons, and then this one, since that part of the image is totally missing, it won't. It just won't draw anything, which will work for both of these cases. So that's super nice. Good. Okay, so now we're drawing it. Now we need to actually have it do something. Let's keep looking for the word buttons here a bit. Yep, yeah, okay, here we go. Handle events. Yeah, okay, good. And this is the end of our buttons. Okay. So in our mouse up or mouse down events, so I'm push the mouse button or let go of it. Let's just copy this over because we're going to do it again. Did I do that wrong? Yes, I did. I missed one of the brackets. Let's make sure we get them all so disaster doesn't ensue. Okay, this time we're not looking at the buttons. We're going to do the sliders. Let me scroll this down a little bit. There we go. Let's find our slider. Sliders. Okay. I don't know if it's pressed. Okay, so... All right, unlike buttons, we need to slide this, so I have a plan. Handle, slider, mouse. We're just going to need sliders, so we're just going to do it like this. Done. And then we'll give it the point, and whether it's pressed, let's do that. Yeah, okay. 
Okay, I'm probably going to delete all this code in a moment, but let's just take that for now. This guy doesn't need to be here anymore. Let's get this out of here. So that just becomes a very, that becomes a one line for loop, which is super nice. But let's go move that thing up here for a second. Static, what I call this thing, handle mouse slider. Win amp skin slider pointer slider. Const SDL bool pressed and const SDL point point. Uh, th this, this is where the mouse is, x and y coordinates in the window. So the slider knob will still deal with whether it's pressed or not based on this magic here. Uh, we don't want this to, we don't care about the destination rack of the button. We want it anywhere in the slider we want to consider it pressed uh, so that the, the knob can jump to someplace if we click on something other than the knob in that area, um, which some people would find uh, unexpected, but that's actually, I think, how Winamp works. It just cares if you've clicked in the slider rectangle. It doesn't want you to actually necessarily grab the slider knob, uh, which makes sense when you consider that you don't have to have a slider knob at all. So, um, Okay, so if it's pressed and we're inside the slider, then we mark this knob as pressed. And we don't care about this switch down here because this is just asking what button did we press, and that has nothing to do with our slider. So that's that. But then we need to update slider value based on where we are. Okay, well, let's do this first. Slider knob. What is it? Destract, that's what I want. Okay. Destract. We want to move the x coordinate of where we draw this knob. So the next time we draw, it'll draw at the right place. Um, based on where we are now. So I guess let's set this equal to point X, which is where the mouse was clicked, but we want this knob to be in the center of, we, we want to center that knob on where we clicked. So we want to say, right now th we're moving the knob, so the very left of the knob is where the mouse was clicked. So we want to slide that over I say we're at that point minus. Um, I guess all we need to do for that is slider knob desk rect width divided by two. So we move over by half the width of the thing, so that it'll be it'll be centered or within a pixel of centered, depending on what that width is, uh, on where the mouse is clicked. But just because we need to. Be careful here because you could slide past the end of the slider. Let's do this. Const and knob x new knob x new knob x new knob x sounds like either a new Linux distribution or like some medicine that has a bunch of side effects in a commercial on TV. So we'll. Spread it out so it sounds like English new knob X. Okay, so let's take that um, and we'll say the we're going to set this thing. We're going to use SDL clamp, which is just a simple macro that says uh, it has to be this value. It has to be between A and B. It'll make sure it's if it's less than that or more than that, it'll clamp it to that value. So we want to not ever go past slider destruct X or and we don't want to go on the other side, go past slider destruct x plus the width of it. So it'll stay within the slider's rectangle. No. Yes. Except destruct plus that minus um, slider knob. Des Correct. With. Now, being a macro, we don't want to start doing math in here because you just end up doing it more than once. Const int far. Far might be a keyword. Let's see. 
this far. Sure, why not? So it'll be, it can't go past where the slider starts plus the width of it, so the, the right hand side of the slider, and then minus the width of the knob. So that if this is your slider where these X's are, and the knob is these three here. Um, obviously, you don't want it to be the the start of the rectangle plus its width, which would be here, because then you can go past the edge of it. You want it to be the width, one, two, three, minus the width of the knob, so that oops, so that the the right hand side of this knob can't go past the edge of that. See, that's my little ASCII art. I do that all the time. You get used to that. Um, and X near, of course, is just going to be the left hand side, which is just simply the edge of the thing. Since we always, since the pictures work from the left, you don't do any math there. The left hand side of that can't go past the edge of the thing. Okay. So make sure that clamps between near and far. And the value is just going to be. Um, float slider. Yeah, no, okay. Slider X minus point X. No, it'll be the other way around. Point minus slider X. Dest rect x. I'm trying to do the math on this. Hang on a second. So the point. See, I'm already doing these again. So let's say the point is right in there somewhere. You want to say from there to there. Okay, yes, so that will subtract that much of it. Point x minus that. Okay, so that'll be. Okay, yeah. Oh, that also brings up a point here. We don't want to update any of these values unless we've pressed this, obviously. If we don't think the mouse has clicked on this, then we don't want to update any of these things. Okay, so this will be a number between zero, if you're clicking right on the left-hand side, and the width of this thing, if you're clicking on the other side of it. So that divided by what are you going to be? The width of the slider rectangle. And that should give you... Yes, okay. Between 0 and 1. And that'll be our value thing. Okay, so that's good. I'm going to do one more thing here just to be... Lock audio device. Because presumably we're just going to use these this value, and possibly this desk direct, but probably just this value, inside of the audio callback thread. So let's make sure this does not change in the middle of the callback thread. Um, audio device, I think is what this was called. So we'll just... Actually, let's just even just do it with this. Back. All right, there we go. Unlock da, da, da. the mixer thread isn't running when this value changes. Now we, this will probably end up in a register in the in the audio callback thread, the mixer thread, um, or at least in a local variable uh, in its own stack. Uh, so we won't keep reading from this, but it's good to make sure that through the entire iteration of that callback that it cannot change, it does not change, and uh, it's presumably stable. So now this is basically pretty free if you don't have, if you're not holding the lock, and if you are holding the lock for a brief second to send some more data to the thing, this will pause, but I think that'll be okay. I think it'll all work out. And if this becomes a problem, maybe we'll try to stick an atomic variable in there or something, but that's good for now. Okay. So that's there, and you're going to see the reason I did this is because, and put that in a separate function, is because inside of mouse motion here, let's keep that point because we're going to need that in a moment, 
Here's our old code for the balance uh, slider and the volume slider. We're just nuking that. We need to know if that's pressed. Let's say const stl bool pressed equals emotion. This is state, and this is the part I always forget. So let's go find that real quick. Include stl events. Oh, it's already on it. How nice. Current button. Okay, stl mouse is it? Yeah, there we go. Oh, I'm already there too. All right. CL button L mask because inside of here, the state in the motion event is a bit mask of all the buttons that are held down because this is not to tell you that a new button has been held down. That's a, that's a different. That's the mouse button event down here, which tells you. See, it's a UN8 here. It's only one button they're reporting that event for. But here, this is an event for when the mouse is moving, so it just tells you while we're moving. These were the, all the buttons that were held down in a bit mask. So we'll do that, and that will tell us. We only care about the left mouse button, so we're just going to turn that into a bool and say that. And then they'll come through here and all our sliders say, hey, make sure that this slider does not have a mouse on it that has the button press change. So it'll it'll update all of that for us. Okay, we'll get rid of this end if we don't need it anymore. Okay, theoretically we are... We have... Let's see, slider. We've set up our data definition up here. We added it to our skin. But we don't need volume slider anymore. Volume slider value. Okay, in our audio callback, we can just change this to. Uh, oh, geez, where is that now? Skin. Okay. If skin sliders. Let's change this to. Hang on. Volume. Const float volume equals skin sliders winamp skin slider volume value okay now this may change at any time in a different thread but we're just going to see we're just going to get a snapshot of what we think it is at the moment and then if the volume has changed we multiply each sample by that, so that gives us a gain. It has been pointed out to me this is not the best way to handle gain because this is what's called linear gain. We're going to fix that in a later video, but for now it's fine. And we'll mess with the balance slider later. Let's make sure we don't have any more. Okay, so. All right, so we set up our structure. We added it to our Winamp skin structure. Uh, we use the data from that thing in here. We have a thing where we set up the whole button and slide the whole UI for it, give it all the data it needs. That's all set up. We have a place to draw it. We actually do the drawing down here. We handle input that might deal with it. And that's it. Um, yee, I don't know. Let's see if it works. 20 things wrong. Let me fix my compile errors here. Cut and paste disaster. Let me fix that. Slider texture, cool. Oh, hang on a second here. Oh, we're not destroying the textures. Well, we'll deal with that later. Okay. Slider texture, that's a to do for later, I guess. Um, oh, forgot to give that a thing. There we go. Slider pressed point. Right, wait, let me do this again with the correct line numbers. Oh, this is no longer an address. Okay, see, it was looking at the right thing because that was—it's already a pointer now. You don't need to take the address of it. Okay, um, where'd you go? That's true. That's a pointer now instead of a struct. A couple of these I just need to clean out real quick. All right, let's add a fit. I'm tired of these warnings. I'm taking. I'm, I'm just. Uh, the the um, 
three exclamation points was because I worked on a project at one point many years ago with somebody else. I wanted to differentiate my fix me's from theirs, so I stuck that in front of there, and it's just kind of stuck ever since. Handle more buttons here, in case you were wondering why I do that. Play, dun, 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 dun. I am declared. Yes, you're right. I. Okay, that should be everything. Okay, we built. See if it works. Okay, we have a line there. That's not. Oh, oh, okay. There you go. As you can see, it's drawing. You can see it's turning the knob. It's it's changing out the bitmap as I move the mouse around on it. That's good. Here's my music. Did I break my music? I might have broken my music. I had the sound turned down. Hmm. Okay. Well, broke that somehow. We'll come back to that. Um, I might just call it a victory for today and stop here for now. Pause previous stop. Did I hit the wrong? Oh, I'm hitting the wrong button, I bet. Because we haven't hooked that up yet. I bet it's actually pause. Yep. There we go. There we go. Okay. There, it works, hooray. Um, I don't know why that's turning that color at the beginning. We need to figure that out real quick. Draw a slider. What did we do here that we shouldn't have done? Texture, source rack. Is the texture not loaded the first time it comes up? Frame, why are you doing that? Next, we do it every time. Hmm. Didn't hit an assertion. Oh, wait. Slider value. No, it has a... Time to bring out the trusty debugger. Try not to do this, but, you know. Draw a slider. What am I drawing that I shouldn't be drawing here? Okay. Okay, it has a texture, that's good. I can't ever read this, I a pretty table. Pretty, set print pretty on. There, that's definitely more readable. Okay, texture is cool. The knob has that, we don't have a knob anyway, it's false. Frames, frame width, test rect, value is one. I think that's okay, width and height. Seems okay. Unless... What is the source rack? 420 and 0. That should be right. Why didn't you work? XY420. Oh, wait. What did that say it was? Okay, that's wrong. How did that happen? Why is 420? But why should it actually be 405 if we're all the way at the top? So that's clearly not correct there. Frame IDX. Did I miss it? What's going on here? Twenty-eight. There's only twenty-eight frames, so that should be one less than it is. Oops. Well, let's clamp that then. We'll just call that a day. <clears throat> just laziness is going to win out here for now. Frame IDX equals SDL clamp. Frame IDX between 0 and... Minus 1. 
Although we might just be able to do that up here, but let's... If that's all the way maximized, if it's all the way at the top, then it's going to end up one past the end. Alright, so let's just, let's do that for now, and that should fix the issue, right? Okay, there we go. All the way at the top, and you can draw it however you want. Jump, Make it jump around if you just want to do that, or you can drag it. Okay, there we go. I think that's enough for today. Um, we're at 45 minutes, but we have a working slider that's not just hacked in there. It's actually got a nice little structure to it, and we can reuse it because we're going to have another slider pretty soon, and um, that feels like good progress. Okay. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to join my Patreon and uh, add your name to the list if you want to see your name in these pretty credits right here. Thank you for watching. See you next time.